Hello, beautiful soul. How are you? How have you been? How are you feeling today in this now moment? Is it a positive period of time in your life? Or a heavier window of time in your life where you're looking for answers, you're seeking solution, there's things you want to know, there's things you need to do. Do you even have the time today to slow down and pause? Are you really ready to dive into space and time with me today? Because it is important to give your time knowing you have the time to surrender. Surrender to the anxiety, surrender to the knowing, surrender to the money worries, surrender to that relationship, that agreement, that date on the contract, that problem, that problem child, the stresses we all have in life. We're going to dive in today. This is a really nice tarot and talk. I'm finding myself again on the platform. This is one of my longer pieces of... um, content long talk long form content over here and i'm just going to surrender with you today if you're willing to hit the like join in i'm enjoying a grapefruit spritzer with two sweet treats homemade one a homemade brownie slice and one a super granola bar slice both made by me because I like to cook and experiment, feel free to look at the links in the description for all of my lovely things I like to make and share on Twitter. Feel free to also look at hermatology.me for inspiration and education. But today I'm going to surrender with you. I'm going to call upon the divine and I'm going to say, oh divine, oh mother Gaia, oh Lord Jesus Christ, oh Ra, oh Horus. Oh Krishna, oh Kalima, oh Hanuman, oh Allah, are you there? Every single God is called in today in the now moment to sit with us, fractalize in relation to all of our beliefs so we can find one today and leave this experience enlightened, more positive, healed, stronger again, renewed. This is a renewable source and energy anytime i come back over here to a tarot and talk i've reached a climax in my spiritual ascension or personal journey where i want to share more i want to touch base with you i want to update you on my reality for some of us are sharing the same threads of the universe and that is indeed our collective consciousness so if those belief systems do resonate with you to come on in let's go Because we're talking to boss bitches, boss men, powerful individuals that have their own ambition, career, drive, determination. We're not looking back. We've already taken off. We're moving throughout space and time now. In our own independent shuttles, many of us have teams on board. Firstly, I want to speak about the different members on board your shuttle. Are they aware of your mission? Because as I love to do captain's log right and take on the role of the captain are we aware of who else is in our platoon who's on your team who's your support troop who do you run to who do you call when you need support advice and guidance who do you delegate to who's second in command who's third in command who's fourth in command who's there for you i had to have a wake-up call this month and make some harsher decisions about who my next of kin is going to be. I'm 35 years of age, now living alone. Important questions I need to ask myself. Life's changed, shifts in relationships have changed. My expectation of other people in my reality has changed. What I desire for my death that isn't happening until I'm well in my 90s, but what I want for myself And how I desire to be catered for, cared for, supported, if the worst was to happen, where I would like my assets, my life to go and remain, I need to consider that. We really need to consider these things. And it's interesting when we get to a point in life when we go, whoa, I would have went that way. I would have called on that person, but no longer do I want to do that. This person is now second in command. This person is now the most reliable. This person is the truest 
embodiment, alignment, oneness, truth of me. And if I was to have to leave this earth plane, I would feel safe with that individual there taking the lead in my absence. Just making sure I wrap up the divination on this planet. They've definitely got the qualities to do that for me. I feel quality assured in that individual. Yeah, may not be who you thought it was going to be in this lifetime. Tough ideologies like that. So what I'm going to do first of all is just let's bow our heads. I know I'm not often overly spiritual and in prayer because there's so many different beliefs we have. But let me just speak truthfully from the soul. Lord, please allow us to see ourselves in you. Allow us to see our mission in the now moment. Allow us to rise up and be all things that the planet requires and deserves. Allow us to know better. Allow us to stay true. Allow us to drive forward in mission with you at the helm. Allow us to know our destiny. Allow us to walk fearlessly in pursuit of your truth and your mission. So many gods exist in this world, so many belief systems. So when I pray like this, sometimes I'm torn because I don't want to ever feel like I'm excluding anyone from the conversation for our God is everywhere and in everything. And as long as we can see that regardless of religion, we can all evolve and respect other. Removing all limitation, removing all hatred, removing all war and need to be right in relation to your scriptural word. We are one. There is no mistake in your scripture and there is no mistake in your scripture. For your truth is your truth in your eyes and you deserve to see it and feel it and nourish it. And we all deserve to walk forward in the light of our Lord, universe, galaxy, Mother Gaia, Ra, Horus, Kalima, Jesus, Allah. Whatever direction you choose, that's yours and no one can take that away from you. And I wouldn't even dare try. Just know that whoever you are, wherever you're from, you're welcome here. Yeah? Let's dive in straight away to the main energies that want to come out during this window of time. We're going home. This is really nice. See some real positive shifts here. We're going home is the first card coming out. We're moving away from any heavy energies. We're moving away from ideologies of suicide, depression. Am I worthy enough? Am I good enough? Do I have enough money? Am I going to succeed? Can I really do this? Why am I not fitting in? Why am I obsessed with this person? Why am I obsessed with this practice? Why am I obsessed with this? Some of you guys may relate to being obsessed with, I want to say, um, gay or lesbian ideologies. Some of you may be obsessed with LGBT community. Stay with me as I explain this. Some of you may be depressed or obsessed with things that are atypical, like you don't understand why you're obsessed with this. Some of you may be obsessed with God. You're the one that always talks about God. You're the one that's always talking about gay or lesbian agendas. You're always the one talking about LGBTQ. You're always the one speaking about drugs or wanting to take drugs in the group. You're always the one obsessed with someone in love. You don't stop talking about the person you love all the time. Some of you are obsessed in relationships and keep going back to toxic relationships over and over again. Some of you are obsessed with marriage and getting a marriage or getting a divorce. Some of you are obsessed with your past, trauma, upset from your past relationships. Some of you are obsessed with cleaning, OCD cleaning, but some of you are obsessed with getting rid of people out your life over and over again, struggling to let people in and remain in your life. Some of you are obsessed with cheating, having affairs, creating karmic connections. Some of you are obsessed with gossiping in social circles where you're caught talking about someone else you was with earlier that day who you acted like you loved. But now you're bitching about them behind their, their back. See, this is what the cards are telling me. A lot of you guys are going through your own unique obsessions. 
which is forcing you to look back at your childhood. Where did I learn that pattern of behavior? Where did that stem from? Why do I choose to do that? That's the first step of victory for you. Don't judge yourself for seeing. I'm, when I'm talking to you and I'm revealing, that's not me judging you. So please accept that. That's me holding firm on what I see and saying, hey, someone here is obsessed with something, is obsessed with a certain kind of outcome, energy, response, dream, desire, relationship, fantasy, ideologies of worship, belief systems. There's obsession here. And you know what's so beautiful about it? The main thing that's coming out to clarify what needs to happen here, it's, it's time to break bread with somebody new, with something new. It's time to move on and move away from what blocked you in the past. Okay, what I'm getting drawn to, to talk about is attachment styles. In development psychology, we talk quite a lot about the different attachment styles we all pick up from our parents. So if you've been abandoned, if you've come from a single parent home and the dad wasn't present or the mother wasn't present, or you've been in toxic, abusive relationships, lied to, cheated on, um, left at the altar, um, just kind of abandoned in different situations, you become more attached. Even if you weren't abandoned, but... There's little things in childhood that could have been a trigger. Like, I always use the example of being the last one to be picked up from school, right? Being always in the wrong place at the time when you're with a specific person. Little synchronistic things have occurred repeatedly in your childhood that have dragged you into a specific kind of love language or attachment style. As a result, you've evolved as a mystic, right? As a high priestess, as someone who would listen to this kind of content, meaning you're spiritual, you're awakened, you're a light worker, you're on the journey, yeah? Okay, now I'm understanding why I'm here and why I've been chosen to deliver this message. Because I did speak on this a long time ago to family and I said my destiny in this lifetime is to be a developmental psychologist who speaks about my own experience publicly. And I said, my family, you're not really going to like that, but you've got to understand this is my destiny and my life. And I admire the likes of Freud and Carl Jung and what they're very experienced at doing and what I don't see enough of in current day are the great developmentalists psychoanalyst of our time talking about their realities their childhood and the childhoods of others they've observed and how we evolve through that like the steps of eric erickson's psychosocial stages of development we all move through that i speak about that in reality in the now so this is the best example i can give you to show you what you're going through or what's been going on around you psychoanalytically through childhood trauma in a child um relations and how that's impacted you now as an adult i was raised in a very manipulative home environment where i didn't have a healthy relationship with parents and there was grooming and abuse at a range of different levels um what was used on me quite strongly was psychological um manipulation psychological warfare so i would be manipulated as a very young child as a, at the age of four to be uh, um demoralized yeah simple words mugged off played for an idiot an adult would mentally abuse me as young as four years old and slap on and spread on layers and layers of manipulative self destructive thoughts so you see if you go over to her members only my other youtube channel over there i've got positive affirmations and um, divine masculine healing and and feminine healing and loads of different affirmative language i am obsessed with positive aff affirmations and i need positive affirmations because as young as the age of four years old i've experienced so many layers of psychological abuse that put me into a hermit state made me go into hermit mode all the time because for me i would say it was bullying and i would say it was 
um, abusive and emotional abuse and neglect and a range of other things but I didn't really process I guess until adulthood how those layers of wording manipulation psychological unhanded abuse layers of grooming and more serious abuse covered up and unseen because someone's very good at making sure you don't remember the severe sexual abuse by layering on other forms of psychological abuse so only when you get out of it and old enough and you start awakening and remember all the layers of your yucky disturbing childhood do you get to go oh shit that's why i do this now that's why i do that now oh i see i'm ascending oh that's why i've become this way that's why i've chose to study what i study yeah it's, it's this i'm talking to you from a, a place of like freudian philosophy and um carl jung's philosophy of the unconscious mind the ego and the superego as well from freud the different layers of the subconscious that are often suppressed yeah I would often go to my room from a really young age and just sit there and kind of just try and process all the manipulative stuff that's just happened in my head. I've gone downstairs and I've just been played for an absolute mug for about an hour and a half by um, a, an, an adult who was meant to be a safe um, provider for me but chose to manipulate me when I didn't want to play the games that they wanted to pl play or behave in the way that they wanted me to behave or they wanted me to forget an inappropriate incident that they created then they would manipulate me and I would be so frazzled and upset I would have to go to my room and talk myself down off the ledge by myself for a while and that's how I, that hermit developed that's how I became me as a result of that I blacked out a lot and repressed a lot of childhood abuse a lot worse than the emotional abuse and neglect only now in adulthood through layers and layers and years of therapy does that, that kind of subconscious demons of of the abuser come up and awaken and i'm going oh my gosh i can't believe i really went through that i remember that there's evidence for that i remember this i remember that all the awful stuff that happened to me in childhood that i played down and suppressed inside of me oh my god now it's coming out to be dealt with so i'm sorry that's a, if that's a hard story for you to receive today but i do want you to know there's layers of that in my story for you i do pray it's not as harsh I do pray it's not as painful, but I am aware that there are things that we need to overcome. Now, I'm stronger now because I'm speaking on this issue and I'm never going to let it hold me back. And I've cried relentlessly for years and years throughout childhood, adolescence and as a young adult. And only now in adulthood, that cry has not been the same since I remembered what happened to me in childhood, what really happened to me. Now I really remember I'm OK again. Because half of the problem was the suppression and the mind control that was put on me. Literal attempts of hypnosis on me were attempted. So I would forget the abuse. And that's what's made me interested in that kind of psyche stuff in the brain, hypnosis. So the abuser actually unwittingly gave me my own gifts because I had to learn to avoid the abuser's trap of being hypnotized and abused and that may sound ridiculous and like a joke to you but literally some children have been abused to the point where someone is in front of them actually hypnotizing them close your eyes um, this is what happened don't look while i'm doing this yeah plausible deniability where in childhood a lot of us won't remember ins and outs of the abuse we went through because the abuser forced you to close your eyes for a period of time so you didn't see the abuser made you look away so you wouldn't remember but you remember something you remember the environment you remember that we were there but you can't remember the ins and outs of that horrific moment that's burning your soul and it's always made you icky or uncomfortable but you didn't know why and then your whole life journey you've decided to study different things in pursuit of making sure bad things don't happen in that area or that region i'm a specialist in child protection and safeguarding I stand up for children with ASD and any issue whatsoever, children not having a voice, children being limited, children being ab abused. Immediately I'm on it, angry, enraged, I stand up for anything. I'm an excellent childcare provider, activities, um, the way that you need to get down to a child's level, meet the, I'm amazing at understanding children's stages of development, milestones, everything. I'm like that because I lack those things. And the older I get and the more it starts to unravel of how much I lack those things and how much abuse was in my childhood, it makes me even more aware of why I do what I do and why I've done what I've done.
and why I'm so passionate about the things that I am. So let's have pride in the fact that we've all made it out of those dark trappings and the corners and hiding away and being shy. And let's stand in our truth knowing that, you know what? We chose ourselves in some of the darkest moments in life and now we lift up and we move forward, yeah? So now we can look at those obsessions and let go. This is a harsh wake-up call for me to share with you guys today as well because now, now the cards have come out is um, kind of breast-obsessed card I've got here and um, heartbreak. So I'm looking at situations in relationships, things we do in relationships. I used to tart myself up all the time, sex myself up all the time, push my tits up like I was Jordan and Katie Price because I felt like it was more appealing. I learned those behaviours. I've always craved more affection than men that was even possible for them to provide. I was also always needy and clingy in relationships because I didn't have um, a healthy um, male role model in my life. I was always craving masculine attention because I was neglected masculine attention from a step parent who actually deliberately neglected me to move my attention away from the abuse that they were providing prior to that right so much manipulation that goes on and um it's scary and it's overwhelming because a lot of us we think we won't remember things we grow up and we suppress some of the worst memories and i, I pray none of you guys have to go through recall and um um, repressive memories coming forward and layers of therapy that really take you to hell because it isn't nice you know but then what do you do get out of the end of this guys as a reward is you get yourself back and you get your inner child back you get liberation and you get freedom and you look at love differently you look at relationships differently every single person I've ever slept with and had a relationship with I feel really really different about now in my life now I'm aware of what I really went through in childhood and how that's made me act all of these years. I have so much love and respect and consideration for every single person I came across. And I'm aware of a lot of the people that I were in relationships with and dated or slept with. That means I would have been dated with them because I don't do one night stands. Everyone knows me and I know them for more than one night, you know. So I send everyone love and healing energy and I see your journey and I see my journey and I see what we've both been through. And I'm sorry that I was unaware of what I had um, been through in childhood and that those inner child woundings were unresolved. So you was dealing with a wounded masculine, a wounded feminine for a long time. And I assume that parts of you were still a wounded masculine because like attracts like. So I was really, really wounded and unaware of um, my habits and needs um, in relationships, in the bedroom, in intimacy, in any romantic dynamic because of my needy inner child. It's me being harsh on self, but yeah, my ideologies of sex and how I had to show up and be sexy and give and meet needs and be the perfect woman was so awful in relation to who I am and what I see now. You know, I've still got a lot to learn, still got a lot to deal with. My relationship with... um drugs and alcohol as well I'll share with you let me know how you all feel about this but I never looked at myself as an alcoholic or anyone who has problems with drug or drink even though I smoked weed since I was 11 years old I can stop smoking weed at any time I haven't smoked weed for months now and I, I don't feel the need to take it up and smoke again I would say cigarettes is harder for me but I also haven't smoked cigarettes for like three months four months now right basically coming on to four months of no um, smoking whatsoever and no drinking whatsoever I didn't think I had a drink problem. I've never considered myself to have a drink problem. But when I went through my old photos on Facebook recently and I realised loads of stuff was public and I'm fighting with the um, albums to close this and that can stay public, but close this, delete that, remove that. Too much content I've got on Facebook and so many accounts. I'm trying to go through and make sure I'm just kind of protecting what I want to be seen and not be seen and in that process I'm like whoa look at all my photos look how drunk I am all the time and no one else is ever as drunk as me I'm always absolutely wasted I have no control or tolerance over drinking the thing is when I go when I don't go out and I'm not with others I don't drink I don't desire to drink but if I'm in a social setting I'll drink but the moment I drink I can't stop drinking because I'm on the spectrum and I'm a, I've got a quite addictive personality style. And actually, if I'm drinking and we're all drinking, I'm just going to keep drinking and there's no stopping me. Because there's some kind of thing that comes over me and it's just, 
a process, a mechanism. It, it's all mechanics to me at that point. Oh, we're out and we're drinking. All right, the bar we have a drink and okay, my drink's out, get another one. And I, there's, there's this kind of switch in me that just kind of goes off. And me looking back at my life and going, whoa, whoa I've really just been wasted a lot of the time. Fun in your 20s, fair enough, no regrets. But in adulthood, I'm like, I don't need to drink. I don't even need to smoke. I don't need anything really. I work so much better being clean, you know? And although I don't call myself an ad addict, I probably could. If I wanted to go down that route and say, no, my habits have been really, really bad with smoking and drinking throughout my life. So I'm gonna cut it out and I'm definitely need to be clean because I'm addicted to it. Then I could go down that route because it's either or, it's how you internalize it, you know? I never, but, but before that wouldn't even be a consideration or a conversation. So you need to see the evolution of growth where you go, actually, yeah. If I, if I go out and I can have one drink, it's fine. I, I won't have one drink and then another. I've got a bottle of wine in the fridge that's been in the fridge for months. I haven't touched it. I've got brandy as well that I use to make a cake. I don't need it. But if I'm in a social setting, out on a date or out with a guy at his house and we're drinking, then I'm just going to go. Do you get it? Like, it's weird. It's weird for me when I'm in a social setting. My drinking levels in a social environment is very different to just me being by myself and having a glass of wine. So it, it's, I've started to understand, okay, how does my energy work in different settings and how does that inf inf impact ideologies of addiction? And where does that stem from? Because if I am on the spectrum, ASD, autistic, um, neurodiverse, then in those ideologies, you've got to understand that different things affect you in different ways. And a certain, anytime I go to certain settings, like I always used to go to mediumship events and it's always in a pub or a bar and I'm always drinking and my, my senses and my gifts as a, as a clairvoyant are really heightened. So I'm already heightened as a medium and excited to be in the space and I can feel the spirits all excited to be in the room because they're going to get a mediumship reading. But I'm like, oh, no, let me have a wine or oh, let me have another wine because it's, it's the overwhelm and panic and anxiety in me, the high functioning in me that I can't turn on or off. So it's kind of like, what do, what is your whole crux? What have you got going on within you that sways you left and right in that way? Because once again, the reading saying we're going home. And that's nice because I want to pin that for you guys, yeah? We're going home. What we really mean by that is the truest you. It's time to meet the truest you because you've been everywhere else. You've explored. Everyone I'm connecting with on this channel at this time, you're, you're a mature adult. Even if you're young, right? And I'm sure this video is probably going to be linked to... Um, over 18s because I really just prefer my stuff to be out of the reach of any children but the truth is you've matured through cycles of the old self I don't want to be cheesy with it I just want to dive into the reading but the point is you've matured so now you're going home to the true issue. You've done the partying. You've done the turn ups. You've done the life experiences. You've done, okay, you've done the debt collecting. Yeah. I just went through all of my debt today and just made an overall assessment. I didn't even think I really had debt like that. Like I didn't really process it, but I went through all of my student loans that are still there and what's, what's going on and any credit cards I've had from how many years ago when I used to use credit cards. And I thought, let me just have a clear up and see what on earth is going on here. And I thought, oh wow, I didn't realize this. I didn't realize that was still there. Oh, okay, I'm managing that. All of this is under control, but okay, that could be tightened up. I could do this over here. I've just assessed all of my budgeting, all of my finance, where all my money is, where all of my money's going and what I need to work on. And it was really reflective because it made me realize what I've been doing in the past as well. So it's the maturity of going, okay, I've made all these mistakes. I spent all this money here. I've put myself in these situations. I've racked up debt here. I've done my studies here and racked up a juicy student debt here too. I need to work on all of these finances and get it down and get it cleaned up. And I need to move forward into my new life come home to self knowing that I'm stable perfect example when I lived at home with a parent you take on more of a child role when you're in the home with a parent immature 
I'm racking up debt, I'm spending loads of money, I'm paying it off because I've got a job to pay it off, full-time job, credit cards everywhere because you've got a job to pay it. So you spend, you go on holiday, you do what you want to do, you live your life. But over time, I fell off. You slip up, you make a mistake. You say, oh, the interest is not too bad there, I'll fix that later. I'll pay it all off next month with my big chunk of money. And you do, or you don't, or you do it again, or you pay a little bit. That's in your early 20s. That's in your 20s. You're playing around. You're not really taking it too seriously. But now, I'm 35. We're mature now, just like I said. So we need to come home to ourselves and look at the life we had prior to now. So whatever age you're at now, pin that. And go, okay, the last 35, the last 45, the last 26, the last 24, whatever it is for you. The last 32, the last 33, the last 34 was this for me. Now, checkmate, we pause, we reassess, we get new budgets, we get new um, wills, insurance, life insurance, pension pots, whatever it is for us, we get a new lineup in aligned to our life and reality now make sure we know who our first second third and fourth in command is now where we're going in the future hasn't got to be totally sorted out but we at least got to know where we stand today and how that's happened in relation to our past our financial position today let's look around at it okay this is what i've made for myself at 35 and this is what i've been doing if I look back through the life log of those 35 years, okay, excellent. It's time to reflect, time for a self-assessment. Where do I want to go for the next 35 then? Because this is what people forget and this is what irritates me most about humans on the planet, to be honest. Most of us are here for a long time, guys. Yeah? What's the average age of death? Like men, somewhere in the 70s, is it? Women, somewhere in the 80s? Either way... I know I'm living till 96. Yeah, that's what I've got logged for me on my life plan at this time. So if I'm living till 96 and I'm actually 35 now, wow, I've got a lot more life ahead of me than I do behind me. So what the fuck am I looking back for? What am I going to worry about the past? Everyone, and this is me having a bit of a bitch and a rant with you guys now. Everyone tuning in and listening to this shit, let's have a wake up call. Because you, you've got more of your life in front of you than you do behind you. So stop crying over the past and start sitting in your seat, straighten up, put your, adjust your crown, put your cape back on, right? Get ready. Because for me, I've got 60 more years on this planet. I've only done 35. 60 more. What else can you do in this lifetime? Where do you want to go? And if you've managed to get to where you are now at 35, whatever age you are, what are you going to do for the next? Because I'm not going to worry about the past. I'm not going to worry about the relationships I had, the friendships I had, the ones that failed, the ones that didn't work out in the way I wanted them to. I'm not going to hold on to relationships either. I'm not going to... If people haven't got the same morals, integrity, respect for me, if I don't feel like like attracts like, if I don't feel like we're like-minded anymore, if I don't feel safe to be in your presence, if I don't feel comfortable, if I feel like you talk about me behind my back and you're disingenuous, then I don't need to waste my time because I've got 60 more here. 60 more years here. In those 60 years, I can find new kin, new friends, new family, new lifestyle. Sounds harsh and fuckery, doesn't it? But if we're not gelling and we're not merging and we're not getting on well and I don't feel okay, my mental health, my emotional well-being, it isn't smooth sailing in your, when I'm in your seas. When me and you come together, we don't really merge like we should, in my opinion. That's true love to say that. That's true love to walk away and own that. That's not a disrespect. It hurts. Because I've been bouncing back and forth in this conversation, this cycle for the last two to three years now. Embarrassing for me every time I bring up this conversation. I feel ashamed of myself. Or in the past I did. I felt like, goodness me, every time I keep talking about those people from the past, I just can't get over it. I just can't move on. I just can't let go. Because your heart so badly wants to be back there in that place you knew. But once again, I'm 35 and I still got 60 in front of me. 60 in front of me. That's all I keep doing now. That's all I keep thinking. I've got 60 more. Come on. Let's go. What are we waiting for? It's not a race. It's not a rush. But fucking hell. Let's go. 
I've got 60 in front of me, you're telling me. And I've done this at 35. Fuck it, let's go all the way then. This is fucking life and we are in it. Let's fucking play. Yeah? Let's go balls to the walls. Let's have it. Come on. What are we holding back for? Why are we living in regret? Why are we living in ideologies of, oh, I should have, I could have, maybe, maybe not. What are we waiting for? This is our time now. We only get one life in this lifetime, yeah. And actually, I don't even quite believe that. You get multiple lives in, in multiple lifetimes because I feel like I get born again over and over again in this lifetime. I will say the most fulfilling thing for me to date in my life Wow, this is amazing that I can share this with you guys because this was not how I felt two years ago. But the most fulfilling thing in my life right now, which brings me so much liberation and reward, I feel rewarded, is the um, ideologies in my life around transhumanism and futurism. I was really broken and depressed when I had to leave the spiritual community and tarot behind because the technology was calling me, computer science was calling me, science was calling me. That's always been my destiny. I came into the game 2016, switched on, stepped out of the matrix and said, right, I want to be um, world renowned and really recognised for um, bridging the gaps between spirituality and science. I was sitting there playing with tarot and Tibetan bowls and, I f and studying at uni uh, within that window of time. Two years after I started awakening, hit uni with the science. Two, but two years before that, solely spiritual tarot reading mediumship. I had no idea. I, I did because I wanted to bridge science and spirituality. But I had no idea not only how divisive it was going to be, but how much it was going to change me as a human being. Because I've shifted entirely. I've been born and died again, bored and died again. When I first came out as a medium, medium judge for that, lost friends, Christian community, ugh, poison you are now, medium you are now, necromancer you are now, ugh. So there you go, dead again to some people. Had to let those relationships grieve again. Then you move on and you evolve again. Now I'm non-binary because I understand the O's and the ones and Darwin's derivatives of evolution. I'm ascending again. I'm not even just a medium anymore or psychic anymore. I'm becoming something else. I feel alien. I feel alpha. I'm non-binary. I'm divine masculine, divine feminine at once because we are all your energy and we all have XY chromosomes for our mother's egg and our mother's sperm made us together. So I'm not transitioning. I'm not changing. I'm not chopping off my tits. I'm not getting a dick. I don't even desire to, to date a woman. I still love men. But there's this non-binary ideology, the ability to be neutral for a minute as I study the constructs of this world through a lens of futurism and transhumanism. Oh, she's weird, robot girl, cyborg woman. Who the fuck are you? What are you doing? We're not comfortable with your new gender. You're shaving your hair. hair. Are you Britney Spears now or are you just gay? Oh my God, we don't understand you once again. Oh, whole nother community, gotta go again. Evolution again, another death within this lifetime because people have ridiculed you and made you feel like shit. They gotta go, out they go. Lost a whole bandwagon on the Christian train. Lost a whole bandwagon on I hate anything to do with the word non-binary, transgender, awkward, queer vibration. Too close to the awkward, queer vibration. Get out of here too. So we, we, we keep going. But you know why I fucking live for that shit? It's because now I'm more smarter than ever. And I'm moving down the quantum field and studying stuff I never believed I could. And it's just opened me up to, I mean, a much better um, life of abundance, prosperity, wealth intelligence understand how the world works understanding money really grounding my business goals and dreams turning my dreams into reality building outstanding technology that is cutting edge in relation to current day yeah taking major risks in society taking major risks in life i've, I've taken major risks with my mental health and emotion, emotional well-being as well taking major risks with my finances as well so then i pause and i go whoa i'm not homeless Made a ma made major risk over the last two, three years. But I came out with a roof over my head and a, and a strong business model. 
strong philosophy, strong scientific background, strong level of intelligence, highly intelligent, driven, determined, know what I'm doing, know where I'm going. Fearless as fuck. But still really, really scared. <laughs> In equal measure, fearless as fuck, but am I scared sometimes? Hell yes. Hell yes. So let's dive in. I'm going to change the deck. I still see heavy energy, okay? Quite heavy energy. I see heavy. Um, I see questions about a relationship. So we might go back to that. Let me. I don't want to dig into your roots first, because I see someone really emotional and crying, withdrawn. So maybe um, someone lonely at night time. Someone crying in their bed. Someone just wrapping themselves in their duvet, um, not wanting to go out, not wanting to um, socialize with anyone. Someone missing their ex or their lover who could be away. Um, someone who could be in the army as well who's um, their partners had to go away for had been called into duty or service however you say it is what I also see but someone who's really sad about um, something that's happened a fight, a disagreement, an issue yeah but I want to look at your energy because that, I feel like that's someone asking me for stuff no look at look at this it's about a love partnership, okay? The, the, the love won't go away. That's the truth. Because, okay, let me tell you exactly what I saw. Firstly, I was using the sexual magic tarot deck. But I don't even use it for sexual um, ideologies or just about relationships. I use it for anything. But the moment I looked at it, because I've been using it um, in such nuanced ways now, where nothing is the lust and the sexual ideology is just so not there. It's just grounded in sacral, which is really, really nice sacral energy. But then... Firstly, I've pulled out the Three of Chalices, the Three of Cups and the Ten of Swords from that deck. And it talks to me about being serenaded, falling in love, being embraced, but also being really, really sad. And that's all I could see in the image is this, this, this relationship that you desire and want, but you're so sad and heartbroken about something from the past or the way that things have happened. Someone feels like um, their relationship's been absolutely ru ruined. Someone's have not had the ability to speak up on what they want and now they've got all these negative thoughts in the back of their mind and I thought oh okay I don't really want to go down this route in the reading I don't really want to go there it just it just didn't feel like where we were at but then I've shuffled a whole nother deck and straight away first card that's flown out is the love partnership card followed by the sacral at the bottom of the deck followed by self-discipline followed by the solar plexus followed by eight of swords trapped in fear followed by five of swords obstacles and challenges followed by temperance followed by the four of cups followed by the lovers card followed by the world and the third eye now that's just for the tarot buffs out there that know what that is but to me that's a massive massive coming home coming home to so beautiful okay what i will say is after everything i've discussed today and i keep saying coming home and i like the fact that the cards are really owning that with the fur die and the world card coming out at the end is the relationships that survive this um, new you and this change that you've gone through and this checkpoint in oh it's gorgeous the checkpoint in life that you're marking today after this reading or within the window of this reading the week of this reading whoever you clock in with you tap in with and you lock in with tight that's your kin forever now that's it many of you that's a lover but many of you that's friends that's family that's your second your third your fourth and your fifth they're the ones that's your platoon that's your team yeah when I asked you, if you are the captain in this story, right? If you're captain of your own vessel, who else is up front with you? And that's what's beautiful. Yeah, when I spoke about, oh, who's, 
who is next of kin, who's going to be on your wheel, stuff like that. Really scary to talk about at a young age, but really important. Because if I ended up getting buried, I would be I would be livid. If somebody put my body in a coffin and buried me, I would be fucking livid. Nothing worse in the world than a burial, in my opinion. I don't want to be buried. I don't want there to be any confusion about that. Not a single fucking confusion. So I have to think about who is responsible for me if that were to happen. That's not going to happen because I ain't going nowhere. But you still need to think. And you need to think of people's capacities and abilities to truly listen to what you want. Because God forbid I say I don't want to be buried and I leave this plane and someone go bury me. Hell no. So I can hang around in this fucking dimension a little bit longer. I'd rather not. Thank you. I want to be dusted. I want to be put into absolute dust so I can evaporate into the ether and return to source in the right way. That That's my belief. No offence to anyone who believes in burials, but from my experience of going over to the other side and what I truly believe in in this lifetime is I believe I need to be stardust. I need to be dust. I need to be ash. And so I can truly leave again. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, really important conversations that I've had to have and have with other people. So they really do know where my heart lies. And then I need to think of who is actually going to follow through with what I'm asking for and have the respect and intelligence and know how, how to execute my ending in a, a really um, genuine, integritous way to make sure that um, what I wish for on my outro is correct. Because God forbid someone try fuck me over and, and keep me on this plane because they just want to go make, give me a nice fucking headstone and visit me at my fucking wooden box. I'll be livid. Get me off this fucking planet. Every ounce of me, dust it, please. Not a joke either. Don't bury me. God forbid. Not here for the burial games. It's not a joke. I need to be dust. <laughs> and this is, the, this is the reality of life, okay? But separate to that, all right? Let me woosaw and come back to the reading. Is there, There's things for you like that in your life, okay? Okay, it's not the crazy coffin situation, but now I've got a lot of you guys really considering how you want to leave, right? Sorry, but it's worth considering. But there's things, there's other things that you want to deal with. This relationship looks really, really deep. So... I'm being a little bit selfish, guys, and neglectful of you because I'm like, whoa, I don't really want to dive in and speak about this, this masculine and feminine um, reading. I didn't really want to go there. So I'm being selfish because the cards say what the cards say. And although I'm chiming into other people in your life, this is about a loving partner and a long term love that has been really, really unbalanced for you because you've been trapped in fear for struggling with a lot of past pain. And not only that, there's unfathomable desires here. The desire for this is unreal and that's what brings up a lot of pain. And not only that, the desire is so high for this that it not only brings up so much pain, but it, it puts you in a position and them, yeah, because this is clearly mirroring vibration here. It puts both of you in a position where you don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. You can't follow through. You can't get your words out. You can't write this down. Nothing seems to go right. The ink will not touch the page in the right way. It's just not working every time you try it won't work yeah it's like a glitch in the matrix every time you try and it's just not getting to where you want it to go that's been the real issue because there's been imbalance here because this relationship that you would know about that's related to you the love of your life the relationship that you desire whatever it is that thing that you want most right it's equal measures of absolute love and desire but also absolute pain for some reason this highlights the pain from your past yeah just like i said and i've been saying for the last 48 minutes guys so to see it again in the cards it's just surreal it's just synchronicity after synchronicity the ten of swords is out in this deck this woman's on the bed crying there's a mess all around her there's a photo in the background she's devastated to look back at the past but there's this new future and new beginning that she desires more than this. And then there's this, this masculine that desires this woman and just wants to kind of grab her and, and really intimately embrace her from the back. It's that I've, this card's come out a few times in divine um, masculine and feminine readings. The divine masculine wanted to do something to a feminine from the back, grab her from the back in what would look like a really intimate, sensual way. 
but it's a situation of the masculine struggling with seeing something from the past a past relationship a past memory something in the moonlight something that hasn't been addressed yeah we're gonna dive in a lot more to this because there's serious serious desire here Set, so, oh, in my head I'm getting citizenship, surrendering. This could be about a relationship with someone who needs citizenship, someone from another country, something like that. But there's a tower moment because both of you have had to make a choice about this new beginning, yeah? You're going to have to communicate about this. And this is what's scary because this is what changes your li life forever. Whoever I'm connecting with, your life is going to change forever because of this. Because you've chosen this. Wow. This is ascension. This is so beautiful, okay? Give me a second to just be. Because I'm learning about myself through this reading today. And how much I judge and push away um, relationships. And how I hate spinning people a line. In a lot of my readings in relationships relationship wise i really push away sometimes these kind of readings because i worry that there's going to be people that watch and this story is not going to be for them which is really fucking harsh because i tell myself and any other viewer that no this is probably not going to be for you because this doesn't even look this looks too good to be true kind of energy and that's what's coming out and i'm being challenged today if you see the cards and how powerful they are and how they're lined up let me tell you the story because me, this is just proves me once again that i still need work because i'm so pessimistic in relations in relation to love i don't believe i don't and I know it's nice and there's great and there's loads of people out there. And I do know I will find someone that I will settle down with and marry and have kids with and be happy. I believe that. I don't doubt that for myself. But when I look at this kind of reading and it's so beautiful and I can see the story that I want to tell about it, it makes me just kind of roll my eyes a little bit, have an attitude like it's not possible, which is injustice to you and me in the now moment because I'm denying truth. Why don't I want to see it? Why don't you want to see it? Why don't we want to see it? Why don't we believe? You know? Because first things first, I'm looking at the eight of the eight of wands with the fur die and the lover's card. This is absolute true love, third eye prophecy, destined love. Not only that, the Wheel of Fortune is right next to it with the World card and the Four of Cups. So I'm looking at people who have been disconnected, not speaking, chose not to speak, pulled away. This is a destined relationship, a destined love that both parties see and have actually prophesied. Yeah, both of you are awakened, clairvoyance with that third eye. You both see a future with each other. You both see your destiny in each other's arms. You both love each other. You're both discontent and bored with your past lives within this lifetime. Everything we've spoken about up until this point, you hitting that checkmate and locking in with where you're going next. In relation to all of that, you've already seen what you want. But the truth of the matter is, intuition doesn't get enough respect on earth. And that's where I, as the hermatologist, need to take time after this reading, reading and pray and meditate and speak to God and pray to God that I can improve my outlook on relationships and love and dynamics and not an intuition. Because my intuition is absolutely abundantly clear about all of this. And the past of this has been really, really heavy and traumatic. A relationship that's been wrapped up in so much stuff from the past, memories, secrets, shocking moments of oh, back and forth confusion but a new beginning nonetheless when this happened and this relation kicked off it was a new beginning and a new beginning that was to the point where it triggered everything around you that was old and that's how you awoken and saw that this was destined that's how you awoken and felt aligned and true this is what triggered that communication to begin with there's clearly been communication that's gone on here that closed out an old life for everyone involved and that's interesting because it's referring to everyone involved i spoke about or everything i've spoken about today 
in line with the story do you get me if hit the like if you're resonating so i don't have to re re reflect on the last 54 minutes of this everything we've spoken about today and the shift that's occurred within you is related to this new beginning that's already happened but that's been a fearful situation that hasn't been balanced because when you receive something like this you believe it's not true it's too good to be true it's too good to be true that energy again and that means this requires confidence. This love partnership requires confidence and it requires self-discipline to be a better version of self, to be more honest and open, to not um, reenact re old cycles um, that you learned from childhood. No longer in this new connection can you be the wounded one. Yeah? Everything I embarrassingly spoke about, about me and my relationships in the past and how I was my inner child. I was my wounded feminine. All my I will say in a positive outlook, and this is how we reflect. I hope this highlights some stuff to you. In my last, in the last, in my last cycle of dating, let's call it that, when I was last dating in 2021, um during that window of time of dating in 2021 the the i only dated uh, two okay uh, either way the two people that i dated that that had genuine significance to me and that had i believed i had genuine potential with really enlightened me to my higher feminine my divine feminine because it was the first time in relationships or in a dating dynamic where I felt really, really mature and I felt really in my power. And there was just something really, really different about those connections. Uh, those connections really required me to make really smart decisions. And at that point in my life, I was moving between homes. I wasn't sure where I was going to live. I was in temporary accommodation and I was back and forth about my future and who, how, who I'm going to settle down with long term. So for, for the f first time in my life, I was looking at settling down and I was looking at um, building a home and building a business. And I had to, for one time, for once in my life, had to consider everyone else in that and anyone else I was dating prior to that, which was prior to me being what, 33, like before, like that was like 30, 33, 32, 33. Within that window of time, and prior to that, I never even considered anyone apart from my awful cheating breakup incident in like 2016, which made me awaken to spirituality and celibacy in the first place, right? So me, my last kind of dating, bout of dating, it, I already was aware that I was growing up because I was no longer looking at them as someone that I would never settle down with or me just being normally non-committal. I really had to consider long-term prospects for me and that person and, and the potential for us to settle down. And it, it was hard. It was the first time in my, in my life I was ever challenged at whether or not, not only if I was going to stay or if I was going to go, but what was best for me and what was best for them in the long run and what our prospects would be for the rest of our lives. And I was never mature enough to do that then. And that's what I think we're kind of establishing is how deeply are we thinking about these connections? Because I was thinking about forever and it was really early days in the dating for that. And um, I didn't maybe outwardly say that, but there was enough conversations for us to kind of see that it, it, they were probably... The, they were the probably best connections I've ever had with anyone in my history of dating. That's my point. That maybe we should just leave it as that. The last two guys that I dated during that period of time living in pre this, the, the accommodation I'm at now, my home now, was the first time I really saw potential and really kind of saw who I was in the eyes of them. And I, I had a lot more respect for them. I kind of felt honoured to be in kinship with them or building connection with them. Although it didn't work out and I didn't go that way, I just saw the maturity in me. And it was, okay, it was, it was just a bit of fun and it wasn't anything too drastic, but the evolution of what could have been or what I had to kind of waver through at the time is, was never more significant in my life than that window of time. Because I was a lot more mature, immature than, but prior to that is my point, you know? 
It's just the evolution. So you've got a value. Okay, we didn't make it and we didn't go any further. But the evolution of that was was difficult for me to actually look at because in one of those incidents, it was kind of like, could this be a forever moment or this could be a forever moment, right? Obviously, I'm clairvoyant, so it's different for me how I process stuff. But it's like, this could be a forever moment or a forever relationship or it could or or not take it seriously because it was at the point where you you can't play any more games you can't be non -com like non committal anymore i got to the point in my life where non committal options weren't really there we all had to make decisions and unfor oh, unfortunately we all made decisions and it didn't even work out for all of us in the way in which we did i guess we all had hopes in this situation you know but it, i i like to think that we've all grown from that and both of those guys that I really do love to pieces in memory now, um, go on and be the amazing men that they were in the time that I was dating them and that they find what they were looking for because they definitely deserve it. And they definitely encouraged me to be more mature. And they definitely were just really, really kind of good hearted people. And I, I, it, so you know when they say like attracts like? And obviously they were both really sexy and that's not always my um, MO. I don't always date the sexiest guys, but they were really fucking hot. They were really sexy. They were really, really good hearted men. And it was just, I, it's, it's rewarding for me to look back and go, fuck, you know, I've matured. I've matured. I still managed to wiggle my way out of that relationship. Little Miss Noncommittal made it out, right? <laughs> Woo, freedom, let's make technology. You know, but the, the love was there and the heart was there and clearly that wasn't destined. And we was in each other's life for a season, you know, and a reason at that. And we've both evolved and grown. And I like to think that my next relationship will be something long lasting, lifelong and exactly what I want to settle down with, you know? So, yeah, it's just about valuing where you've come from in relationships. Because prior to that, I've had an on and off celibacy for years. But prior to that, I wasn't really in the right headspace to be dating. My lifestyle, my home environment, the people I was surrounded by, my outlooks on relationships and sex and what I should be doing and how I should be presenting and how I need to behave was really immature, really embarrassing. So I really, I look back at my last two dating experiences, not embarrassing at all, you know, I wasn't embarrassed by, by the situation as I'm looking back at myself in it, I felt mature and I felt powerful when I felt like who I was dating, they were also mature and powerful. And I think all of us kind of really started to think about our lives, like uh, the epiphany of like, oh. I thought I was just going to be dating you and non-committal and it wasn't going to be serious and I wasn't going to have attraction to you and there wasn't going to be ten potential for like lifelong connection with you. But actually, whoa, we're, m more, we're, we're more ready for commitment than we ever thought. Whoa, that's quite serious. No one expected that. Like, and that was just, that's a really positive takeaway, you know? So we're all growing, you know, and we all have to try in different ways. And at that time, I chose my business as well. I chose the fact that the business hadn't started climbing yet um, in the way in which I needed it to. I had to make a decision of whether I was going to go balls to the walls with the business and really, really go um, high up the chain or if I was just going to settle down for um, something that was not going to be financially viable in, a few, in four years from now, to be honest with you. Four years from now, I probably would have closed um, the School of Hermatology down and been struggling financially and would have went into work for um, someone else as kind of a maybe administrator or like um, maybe maybe even CEO or kind of corporate a low level job for someone else and just sit on a sal salary for the rest of my life, sit on like a four, sit on like a 46K salary or something. And imagine you're in a period of life, yeah, when you're wavering. Not everyone will get this, but if you're clairvoyant, you fucking know you see your future, right? You see your future in the eyes of the others, right? And who you date. And you're like, if I date this guy, are you getting flashes of what you and this guy are going to have? And you're like, shit, do I go that way? And then you're looking at this guy, you're like, fuck, if I go this way, then there's a future with this guy, there's futures with this guy. Ah, what do I do? And then there's my future, which is kind of in the middle. And it, it, it's, it, if I go to my future, right, which is straight down the middle... And obviously there's going to be someone else that meets me down there. But if I go left, I see a beautiful future. 
if I see go right, I see a beautiful future. A positive, okay, I see a positive relationship that, I don't know if it could have went all the way, to be fair, but one could have. But that's the clairvoyant eye. You know too much and you know more than you should and it's unfair and it's irritating. You don't know what to do, but it's your vision and you can't deny it. And you don't tell them that, especially in early dating stages, but you see it. And you're like, shit, sh I could go. If one situation was really hard because it's like, I can see what this is and I can see what God's providing. And I can see life, I can see us getting married and lifelong. What the fuck do I do, right? And then the middle one is like, fuck, I see billions down this way. There's billions here. And this is just me by myself and there's billions. Me over here, humble life, fair enough. Um, business will be done. Business would have lasted. It's weird. Okay, let me give you this quick um, story because I can't believe I'm telling you this and I see it so it's worth sharing. And if any of the guys that I've dated is listening to this and you know it's you, then fair enough. I love you. Thank you for being part of my journey up until this date. Yeah, and I hope you find your true counterpart and divine feminine because you do deserve it, okay? So to the left... One guy, um, if I stayed with him, I would have still had the School of Hermatology for the rest of my life, but it would have been um, a really small corporation not making that much money, definitely not millions tied to it. Maybe a stretch, a um, quarter of a mil. Okay, maybe half a mil per annum. But when you take away all the expenditures, da, 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 it wasn't too exciting, okay? So that was the 500k Hus um, life and husband over there the other guy wild fun um don't think we ever ever got married but i think we would have dated for years and years maybe had periods of times and on and off dating maybe been even open and have a polyamorous relationship over there have a really fun business life and dynamic because we had a lot of business and um personal life connections going on but it would just been um at least 20 years solid of a relationship and strong business ties and then something that happened at the 20 year mark where we spin and change and make decisions about whether or not we do or don't stay and there wasn't any real cheat in there or anything major that I had concerns about believe it or not because in the now moment um there were questions of how genuine is this but the long term was looking good for at least 20 years right so 20 years at least long-term committed relationship really nice guy uh marriage rest of my life 500k on a max cap or a relationship in the center don't know who's up at the end other end but it's me by myself for now in my black suit and I'm looking at billions. What do you do? What do you do? At that point, I'm living in supported accommodation, still waiting to sort out what's going to happen to um, with with my new housing, and um, trying to assess even if I have the heart and the energy to keep building um, the business because everything got shut down after i came off social media during the um first phase of social media versus reality when i really the shit storm hit the family and it and online met offline and uh, my reality started to spin the fuck out and i discovered um some really intensive stuff about um what was going on in the world at a much grander level which brought me into slap bang futurism slap bang the world at large slap bang government big tech i need to write a report on this this is massive um ecological shit that i need to share with higher level professionals i need to report this to gov that's how deep it was so when that with all that stuff going on in my head and that already happening and me working it on recovery of at least my mental health and emotional well-being the best thing was to not force any of these guys to have to come on that journey with me and for me to walk it alone either way i knew on my own i'm guaranteed bill a uh, billions i could see that easily looking right in front of me there's a billion go and get it right but it, in that moment i had to say a goodbye to that potential husband on the left and that turn up lifestyle that i could have had on the right do you get what i mean that's how life works. That's how clairvoyance works. That's how God lines you up, you know? And then interestingly, which I'll also share on the outro, now I'm opening up and being less negative about relationships. There was one win moment of time, right? Where I had a dream about someone. And weirdly enough, I had a dream. I was the guy that I potentially could have married, right? Uh, um, we both woke up and we both had really interesting dreams. And I told I told him the dream I had. 
about a girl I saw him with in the dream. And I told him I had a dream about a guy. And he's like, yeah, I had a dream about a girl. And I said, is that, was that your ex-girlfriend? He was like, yeah. And I, I had the same dream that he was dreaming and we were in bed together. I mean, anyone who dates me, you're fucked because I'm clairvoyant as fuck. His dream that he had, I actually saw and dreamt of. Then I said, I also had a dream about you. And then when I told him the dream I had about him, he said, that's not me. That's another guy you're dreaming of. And I said, no, it can't be. It looked like you. And he was like, that's not me. You dreamt about another guy. And obviously he's quite, he's got a lot of clear senses as well. But I didn't really believe in his clairvoyance at the time. He never said he was clairvoyant, but he's, he's aware of energy and stuff. So um, he was like, that you're dreaming of another guy. That's not me. Not in a rude way, but he was like, I'm telling you now, that wasn't me. Because it was very specific, right? So we've left it and I've, we've had that amazing experience. But then later on, um, that year or even the next year, 2022, that dream that I had that I thought I, it was him, it wasn't him, it hit matter. And then I've seen it online and gone, oh my God, what the fuck? I dream about this person, but while I was with that person? So spirit sends you signs, the divine sends you signs, what you're destined for will never pass you by. And the way that God tries to swear, show you um, or sway you, I wanted to say sway you left and right to help you see or give you prophecy and foresight. And um, yeah. I think that was just a really significant moment for me to wake, to awaken and go, well, God was also showing me another way in my future that I didn't consider and that I wasn't open to at the time and that I definitely tried to say it was that guy because I thought it was that guy and he was like, no, it wasn't me. Like he was in my head and saw it and I thought, how do you know I wasn't, you didn't see it. He's like, I know it wasn't me, it was someone else. And I was like, whoa. And then a year later, it genuinely was someone else and I was like, shit. How did that person get into my dream at that time? Interesting. Interesting how things work, guys. You know, that's, that's still a reality playing out in the now moment. So only God knows what's going to come of that in the future. But that's what life is. Taking risks, manifesting what you want, healing from heartbreak from the past and giving love and respect to anyone you went on a journey with, whether it was good or bad or negative. Take the positives and go, you know. So I really hope this found you well and you found light in this story. Feel free to share yours in the comments. I'm sending so much love and light and healing energy to you right now on this journey. And I'll be back soon with more, okay? Love and light.